Welcome again friends. Uh, in this video we'll be talking about the introductory part about about aminoglycosides. So we'll be talking about the class aminoglycosides. Glycosides and this aminoglycoside drugs are the part of protein 30S ribosome inhibitor. So let me write. They are a part of 30S ribosome 30S ribosome inhibitors of bacteria because bacteria are having 30S ribosome, right? Now, among these aminoglycosides, what we are having, we are having many different examples, and the examples are kanamycin, neomycin, gentamicin. So, let me write uh, kanamycin. So, it is having a mycin at this end. So, kanamycin. Neomycin, uh, it shouldn't be any gap there. I am writing the gap to make you understand. So, canamycin, neomycin, gentamicin, and it is also having streptomycin, streptomycin, and so on. So, there are many more examples like this. So, it's having a mycin at the end, right? So, in all this case, the mycin is there. Now, uh, the property of this aminoglycosides, as I've already told, uh, that they are a 30S uh, bacterial ribosome inhibitor, but they are having a very, very poor oral absorption. Very poor. So, let me talk this. They are very poor. They are having poor oral absorption. Poor oral absorption. That's a point. And... They also have low lipid, lipid diffusion, not sorry, low lipid diffusion. These are the problems. Low lipid diffusion. So these are the two problems uh, which are making uh, these aminoglycosides uh, to very, very dangerous or very difficult uh, to take up because it is having poor oral absorption, so cannot be absorbed by the oral route. And it is having low lipid diffusion, so we can't just inject in our lipid uh, or soluble. It is having very less uh, lipid solubility. So in both these cases, it is difficult to inject. So in those cases, only one way is left there, and that way is to have an intramuscular injection. For that reason only, usually take them via intramuscular injection. So let me write via intramuscular. intramuscular injection so you need to take them via intramuscular injection because it is having very poor so let me talk it is having very poor oral absorption it is having low lipid diffusion as well as poor gi absorption so keeping this thing in your mind we need to choose an intramuscular injection for injecting or taking up this aminoglycoside antibiotics like kanamycin neomycin gentamicin not Jena, it should be Genta. Let me put the T here, Genta. Okay, and Streptomycin. Okay. Now uh, the spectrum of activity for them is they uh, survive best. Uh, they they serve best against gram-negative kind of uh, aerobic bacteria. Gram-negative aerobes. Okay, like E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Proteus. So the examples. Let me talk. E. coli. Pseudomonas, okay, uh, Klebsiella, Klebsiella, and also Proteus, Enterobacter, Proteus, Enterobacter, and so on. So you can see among all of them, this E. coli, Enterobacter, they are of enteric bacteria. Pseudomonas, Klebsiella is a kind of enterobacteria. Proteus is also enterobacteria, so they are very much effective against effective against enterobacteria. Enterobacteria. That means uh, not entero actually enteric bacteria. Enterobacteria is a different kind. So let me put here they are against enteric bacteria. I must put it like that. Okay, so they're against enteric bacteria, but they can also kill some gram-positive aerobes. An example is Staphylococcus, Mycobacteria, and uh, and few of them: Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, and Mycobacteria. So some gram-positive. I don't have uh, region left over. Anyways, they can go against gram-positive uh, aerobes also. And the example are Staphylococcus, Mycobacteria. 
okay and uh, remind you that this uh, kind of uh, activities are shown by this against this gram negative arrows like e coli klebsiella proteus and all all of them this uh, effectivity as they are blocking the 30th ribosome it is act uh, it is acting as a bacteriostatic agent not as a bacteriocidal so that means it is not killing the bacteria it is bacteriostatic static in nature right so it will halt and pause the growth of the bacteria rather than killing the bacteria but uh, in, in whenever they are going against this gram positive bacteria like staphylococcus mycobacteria uh, and all of them in this case in those cases they can kill in those cases they can kill the bacteria so they can act as bactericidal if we take them for a prolonged time period against the gram negative gram positive bacteria like staphylococcus and mycobacteria and so on okay now the therapeutic use for them are against bacteremia bacteremia now what do we mean by bacteremia bacteremia means uh, uh, in those cases where your blood is containing bacteria so when your blood stream uh, so bacteria enters your blood stream in those cases we call that situation bacteremia and also they can go against sepsis okay it's uh, kind again due to infection it can go against mycobacterium Staphylococcus, Pseudomonas, we can use them to treat TB or tuberculosis infection and also very important thing we can uh, use them against Staphylococcus aureus food poisoning which is a very very common kind of food poisoning observed in US so we can treat uh, the Staphylococcus food poisoning by using this aminoglycoside antibiotics okay except for that we can take them against mycobacterium staphylococcus so let me write mycobacterium mycobacterium infection staph infection and also pseudomonas infection okay okay so these are Okay, and what are the side effects? The side effects for this uh, this aminoglycosides, there are a lot of side effects. So that is why this this uh, aminoglycosides found to be dangerous because they are having lot of lot of side effects. And the side effects can be nephrotoxicity. So they can be nephrotoxic sometimes. So let me talk. They can be nephrotoxic. Nephrotoxic. That means they can uh, be toxic against our uh, renal system or renal failure. They can be associated with renal failure. Renal failure. Okay, so they are nephrotoxic. They can be autotoxic. Autotoxic. Autotoxic means they can be associated with our auditory nerve failure or auditory impairment. That means obviously there is something to uh, link with uh, our ear and our hearing. So auditory, auditory impairment, impairment. This could be a part of it. Okay, and this except for that uh, they can cause headache, fever, dizziness. So these things are milder. Headache, fever, dizziness, rat, rashes, skeletal muscle relaxation and also neuromuscular junction breakdown so that is another important thing they can be associated with neuromuscular junction breakdown so you can see many many side effects and all of the side effects are dangerous nephrotoxicity autotoxicity neuromuscular junction breakdown and hypersensitivity is also related anaphylaxis is also related with it so uh, so aminoglycosides are usually not taken a single uh, or usually not taken a singly or as a simple a single antibiotic treatment due to this presence of lot of uh, side effects so usually aminoglycosides are taken with beta lactams in those cases this toxicity will reduce in, in certain extent so that's why it is always formulated to take uh, this aminoglycosides with some beta lactam antibiotics because beta lactams are bactericidal so they are sidal that means they will kill uh, the bacteria but this this aminoglycosides 
uh, activity along with beta lactams are increased and the toxicity reduced uh, up to certain extent so that's the reason for using them all together via combinatory drug therapy processes okay so that's the introduction about aminoglycosides and i hope that's helpful thank you